Welcome back to the Stan Simpson Show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, too. A recent study showed that married couples reside in only 48% of all households, an historic low since they started doing the census reports. Lori Giles, a regular contributor here to the show, lawyer, divorce mediator. Were you surprised by this? You see these couples coming all the time. Did this surprise you? You know, I read the study, the UVA study, and it kind of makes sense, but it just is a shocking number. I can't imagine that less than 50% of Americans are married. That just seems like a really low number. So what's happening? High profile cases, Alan Tipper Gore and Arnold and Maria Shriver, a lot of long standing couples breaking up. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing from your perch? What's happening with these long standing couples that's causing them to break up? You know, I think that, I think marriage goes in cycles or divorce goes in cycles. I think that there's a group of people somewhere between mid 40s and mid 50s who get divorced for several reasons. One, they're completely different people than they were when they got married very young. Or two, they stay together for the sake of the children and the last child is going off to college so they're splitting up or on the alternative it's because someone did something like in the case of Arnold Schwarzenegger mm-hmm. where there's infidelity mm-hmm. or gambling or something that has really that's it I'm not taking it anymore so once the decision is made you're saying be very careful now because once you are divorced there are a lot of pitfalls and being financially free is one huge obstacle right and there's a bunch of things your biggest what's the biggest flaw you see with divorced couples when they separate they don't tie up the loose ends that they think that the divorce is done the minute they walk out of the courthouse but that's really not the case and so they end up getting things during the divorce that they can't afford. For example, a lot of people have to have the house, have to have the house, Mm -hmm. and then once they realize that they have the house, but without the alimony or without that second income, they can't afford the house. So you see a lot of people going into foreclosure and losing the assets that they fought so hard for during the divorce process. Because emotional decisions are made, right? Not the biggest thing. People need to step back and make some logical, sound decisions and not put an emotional value on the house or the pots and pans or anything else. It has to be a decision that comes from the head and not from the heart. So look at some of your tips here. We have a little full screen. You mentioned one, retention of assets to the house. You're saying that when a lot of times someone says, hey, I want the house, it's an emotional decision. They get the house and say, you know what? I can't, I can't afford, afford this the house. house. Then what happens? Now you're in more financial ruin, right? The first thing to do is to get out, to let go of the emotion, make a sound decision based on what you know to be correct, and get out. How get often your- does that happen from your experience where very, people just very say, you know often. what? I got the house. I can't afford it. I'm stuck. Very very often, especially with women who weren't aware necessarily that they can't afford it on half of the income. So that happens very frequently, that people get so caught up in the emotion of I have to have the house, the children need the stability of being in the same house, Mm. or whatever the reason is. It's adds more stress. It's just a bad financial move very often. I'd say that's one of the top five mistakes that people make when they're getting divorced, Mm. having to keep the house. So sell the house if you can. Sell the house, especially in this market, sell the house. All right, how about paying off debts and divvying up debts you mentioned now? Also, emotional decisions, right? People take on too much debt, you're saying, sometimes, and trying to get out of there? Very often, especially if the divorce gets to be long and protracted. People's attitude is, I'll do anything to get out. I will take all the debt. (laughs) And then they get all the debt and realize they can't afford all that debt. (laughs) I'm broke, exactly. (laughs) So that's the point. Be logical. Think logically. Sit down with your accountant. Sit down with a financial planner. Sit down with anyone who can think logically and not emotionally and tell you, no, you can't afford to pay a $10,000 a month visa bill just not going to happen. For most folks, it's tough because hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Sometimes it's the first time they're going through a divorce. They don't know all these things, right? That's why they have you here. That's, that's that. <laughs> and they should listen, but most people don't. They decide on emotion. Retirement planning, another issue now, right? So mm-hmm. you get divorced, you've been married, whatever, 20 years, retirement planning, that's all out of whack now, right? It why? is out of whack. And people don't realize that what you've saved as a couple is not going to be sufficient when you're by yourself. Why not? Because your expenses are going to be different. Things are going to be very different than what you've been planning when you were married. And another thing is that so many people will get a chunk of of the retirement of the other person and then spend it, buy a house, do something. You need to realize you need that retirement money. You cannot spend every dime, especially the retirement money. And there are tax issues, too, right? You take some of the 401 k money, and there's taxes, and there's tax implications, cetera, and right? people don't realize the tax implications it can be a large percentage of it. So you want to keep things intact. If there's a financial plan in place, amend it, change it, but don't scrap it all together. Disability planning, a very important issue here, right? Now all Absolutely. of a sudden you're divorced, it's just you. Who takes care of you when you're sick, right? Before it was a spouce, now what do you do? Before it's a spouse, so that's the immediate. As what are people doing? People 
aren't doing anything, and that's really? where the problem that's comes. People need to immediately redo a plan, get long-term health care. There are lots of agents out there who do great long-term care plans, um, figure out a new disability. Get a plan in place of what right. would happen if something happens to you. Because who do you go to, right? Who do you go to, and who would make those decisions if you have young children or even that's teenagers? That's tough, isn't it? And what teenager wants to have to make a life-altering decision for their parents? So think those things through. Estate planning, final one. Same issue there, right? You have young children, maybe, and now you have some estate planning going on, and now you realize, gee, who do I give all this money to? Do you give it to your ex-spouse, who you're probably not in good terms okay. with? Do you give it to your kid who's younger? What, do you, what happens? And do you want to really give it to your teenager who can go out and buy right. a Maserati with whatever? Absolutely not. So what you, do you need do? to do a new plan. You need to figure out who can be responsible. When will your child be responsible? What will your child need? And the really important thing is don't leave money necessarily directly to a child who's out before they're done with college because that will completely destroy any chance they might have of getting financial aid. Oh, wait a minute. So, so don't leave it before, leave it after college absolutely, age. Absolutely. That way they can't tap it or, or they can't consider tap it. it. Okay, or at least they can get through college. I've seen too many cases where a parent is leaving things to the child thinking that they're helping the child out. And the them. reality is the child then can't go to school. Too so many assets. Way right. too many assets. Good Be stuff. careful with that. Catch her stuff on HuffingtonPost.com. She's a regular contributor, Lori Giles. Thank you, Lori. Thank when you. we come back, a local playwright is producing a tribute to the godfather of soul, James Brown, that premieres Saturday in Hartford. Don't even think about going away.